Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to make a tea bag wallet. Yep, super little wallet to carry out your tea bags wherever you want to go. Never run short. These make a great gift idea for someone that loves their tea. Really easy to pop in the post. So I'm Christine of Christine'sCrafts.com and this channel is dedicated to crafting on a budget. So what are you going to need to make a tea bag wallet? Well, the beauty of this is you only need small pieces of fabric. It's a great scrap busting project. So from your main fabric, cut out two pieces that are seven inches by five inches. So that's two pieces of those from your main fabric. Also from your main fabric, cut out a strap piece that is seven inches by 1.5 inches. You're also going to need some pockets for the inside, which you can do in the same material, but I'm choosing to use a complementary material. And these should be seven inches wide by four inches deep for one of them and seven inches wide by three inches deep for the other one because you want different depths of your pockets. The other thing you're going to need is some interfacing to stiffen your wallet. I use the iron on kind but your piece wants to be seven inches by five inches the same as your big wallet pieces and that's everything you need to cut out. So the first thing you need to do is get that interfacing and attach it to one of your main pieces of fabric. I use the iron on type, so I'm simply going to iron it on. Be very careful to check that you get the glue side onto the back of your main piece of fabric. Okay, so it's the back of the main piece of fabric. When you've applied your heat, if it's still not stuck quite completely everywhere, just have another go. Whilst we're ironing, we're going to take our two pocket pieces and along the long side, the seven inch side, we're going to turn a small hem. And I do mean small, probably about a quarter of an inch. And then turn that hem again to give us a double hem and get rid of any raw edges. So that's on the larger pocket piece. Repeat that for the smaller pocket piece so that both of them have got a very tidy top edge of their pocket. If you want to, you can pin those, but I think they press, they hold well enough because you're going to sew along the hem that you've just made. You can do it in matching or contrasting thread. I'm using the white all the way through so that you can see everything I'm doing. But just run along the edge of the hem of each pocket piece. Make sure you finish your edges, your thread at either end. And you can see that's just going to hold that hem in place nicely when the pocket is made. So we're doing it for one pocket. We're just going to repeat the process exactly for the other pocket so that they're both ready to go in. We're now going to think about the strap. So take your strap piece and fold it in half lengthways and press. Get a nice firm fold. Open it back up and then fold one edge towards that center and press it. You're basically splitting your strap piece into quarters, into four equal lengths. You'll see I jump sometimes because the reflective surface that I'm ironing on can get a little bit warm to say the least. So just press carefully along and then we're going to fold those two edges in and then fold along the central fold and just press it again to hold it all in place because this is going to form your strap so you don't want any raw edges. Once it's pressed, you're happy with it, it's time to sew it. So you simply need to place it under your machine and sew along the edges that you've just folded together. It's your choice. You can sew along both long edges to make a certain style of strap, but you only need to sew along one edge, which is what I'm going to do. You can also adjust it as you're going along or you could pin it so that nothing can move or clip it. You'll see that as I'm sewing along it, I just keep adjusting that edge. I just keep making sure I'm happy with it, making sure it's sitting right so that I get a nice strap. 
once you get all the way to the end we're going to just sew our two ends of our strap together so that they sit nicely when we sew the whole wallet and nothing can move about so I'm going to show you what I mean once I've trimmed my threads I'm going to loop and then place the two ends so they sit next to one another and I'm just going to sew over the end now the only thing that matters here is that you sew very close to the end because you don't want any of those stitches to show when you've finished your wallet just pop it into your machine sew along one and then place the other one up against it and keep sewing it should just hold those two in place for you when you come to assemble your wallet again i will show you it once i take it out from the machine you'll see that i've just reversed back to make sure it's all secure nothing's going to come undone and i'll trim off my threads so they don't end up anywhere i don't want them so we have a strap all ready to attach to the wallet so I'm going to take the piece of wallet, the main piece that's got no interfacing on it, pacing it right sides up, and I'm going to place the larger pocket on it right sides up. So you can see it's just going to form the inside of the wallet. Now measure a couple of inches down from the top of the pocket and just mark it. I'm going to pin the two pieces together. And then move across the wallet and measure two inches down again. Then you're going to sew along this line that you've marked. Now, if you prefer, you can get a fabric marker and you can draw that line in. I'm just going to take it and sew it. But this is to stop your tea bags disappearing down too deep into the pocket so you can't get them out. So just pop it to your machine. If you've wanted to, you've drawn a straight line, or you're just going to run along the line of the pins. There's the bonus effect of holding those two together while we carry on building the wallet. So we're going to place those down. We need to find that smaller pocket and place that lined up at the bottom of the wallet. And you can see how it's going to form those pockets inside your wallet. And then get the strap. And we're going to place that on top of the larger pocket, above the lower pocket, the smaller pocket. Now I'm just putting a clip on it to hold it in place. You can pin it, it's up to you. And take the large piece of main fabric that had the interfacing on it and place that on top. So we've now formed a sandwich and pin all the way around. I choose to pin the corners and at each corner I check everything's lined up and then I place it down and check everything's lying flat and just keep doing that until you're happy with it. Get a pin in through where the strap is, and make sure it's all secure. Now at the top you need to leave a gap so that you can turn this out. So at least two inches, maybe a little bit more. And I mark it with pins so I don't accidentally sew the whole thing shut. Now I'm going to sew all the way around except for the hole at the top. So go to your machine, do a little bit of reversing, make sure it's secure. Get to the corner, lift the foot, turn 90 degrees and go again. Repeat that at each corner. You're just working your way around the whole wallet. I tend to have the machine foot along the edge of the fabric. Cut your ends off and now it's ready to turn out. But I recommend, so you don't get too much bulk, that you cut the corner off at each corner. You want to get close to the stitching, but not so close that you risk clipping the stitches. This is just going to reduce some of the bulk when you turn it out. And now it's time to turn it out. So you're literally just going to turn it through and your wallet should appear as if by magic. Now, if you've watched any of my other sewing tutorials, you'll know the chopstick is my favourite tool for getting to the corners. It's not too sharp. Don't be too rough. You don't want to poke through your corner. But poke it into each corner until you've got a nice crisp corner or as crisp as you want it. And then we're going to be in a position to press the wallet. I really recommend pressing it before you sew it because you'll get a much better finish. You can take the time 
to make sure all your edges are flat and how you want them. And then top sew all the way around. So it'll top sew and make a really neat, nice finish. And it'll also sew over that hole you left in the top. So it'll close it up nicely. You'll see I just started on the side. It doesn't really matter where you start. When you get to the end, you're going to work over where you started and then just do a little bit of a reverse just to make sure nothing comes undone. To make sure you've two sides to your wallet and all your tea bags don't fall around, fold it in half and mark the center of your wallet. Again, you can mark this with a pen, but make sure it's a washable pen so it will come off. Or you can just put your pins there like I've done. And you're going to sew a little seam straight down the middle. And it needs to be exactly down the middle. And then your tea bags will fit in either side in your four little pockets you've made. There's nothing to stop you making one of these bigger, putting more pockets in it. I just think this is a nice little size to pop in your bag. So there you go, we're nearly finished. At this point, I recommend you put in some tea bags to give it a bit of bulk so you can see how it's going to be. As you can see, I'm very much a fruit tea sort of person. And then fold it short, put your little tab across and see where your button needs to go. And then mark where the button needs to go. You can take your tea bags back out and you're going to sew the button on. So you want to work from the front, nice little stitches, a little stitch then through the button and you want to make sure you do not sew through either of your pockets inside. It's really important that you do nice little stitches that only go through that top surface of fabric and interfacing. That will be strong enough to hold it. Remember you did make it stronger with interfacing. Because you don't want to see these stitches on the inside and you don't want them in your pockets. So if you need to, put your fingers inside the pocket inside to make sure you can't put the needle through accidentally. See, I've just checked the pocket there. Just keep checking or keep your fingers in the pocket. And then once you're happy, finish off and then cut off your thread. And there you have it. You've completed your little tea bag wallet. You might find it feels a little loose with no tea bags in. It would be great once you get them back in. So good luck with your tea bag wallet and I hope you enjoy it and enjoy having your tea with you whenever you need it. Or I hope the people you give it to enjoy it as a gift. So please remember to give me a thumbs up below if you've enjoyed this video. Subscribe and hit the bell so you know when I put any more out. And thank you for watching.